Hello, Matt here from chemistrystudent.com. In this video, we're going to look at the structure of an atom. We're going to talk about what atoms are, what makes up an atom, and how our understanding of atoms has changed over time, leading to our current electron cloud model. Atomic orbitals and electron configurations have been covered in much more detail in separate videos. Check the links in the description below. The ancient Greek philosopher come scientist Democritus proposed an idea of atomic theory, that all matter is made up of tiny indivisible units that can't be broken down into anything smaller, and he described these units as atoms. Now, we've come a very long way since Democritus and his theory, and our understanding has really shot away in the last hundred or fifty so years. We now have evidence that matter is indeed made up of small units, and we even call these units atoms. But what we mean by atoms today isn't quite the same as what Democritus had in mind. Today, we describe atoms as being the smallest indivisible units of an element. Keep breaking a sample of an element down, and eventually you will end up with small particles that, if broken apart any further, no longer behave as the element that they made up. This doesn't actually mean, however, that we can't break atoms apart any further. A bit like a model made up of the same type of pieces of Lego. You can break the model down into single pieces, just like you can break a sample of an element up into individual atoms. But if you really want to, with a lot of force, you can break the individual pieces of Lego up into smaller bits. However, if you've ever done this, then you will know that they no longer work as Lego pieces in the same way as before. Just like if you break up an atom, it no longer behaves in the same way. The smaller pieces or particles that make up atoms are called subatomic particles, and there are three types – electrons, protons and neutrons. Just like there are different types of Lego bricks, there are different types of atoms in the universe, and each type of atom is described as an element, with each one having different numbers of subatomic particles in. See here how the definition for atoms and elements kind of links back round on itself. We haven't found any of this information out in one quick move, however. It's taken huge amounts of effort and some very bright minds to get there, along with some pretty amazing experiments. In the late 19th century, a scientist called J.J. Thompson discovered the first subatomic particle by confirming that atoms contain negatively charged particles that got called electrons. In the early 20th century, one of J.J. Thompson's past students, called Ernest Rutherford, went on to discover that atoms also contained positively charged particles that he called protons. These protons were found to be in the very centre of an atom, making up what was called a nucleus. Interestingly, he also noted that the charge of a single proton was exactly the same as the charge of an electron, just the opposite way round. We now know the exact charge of an electron to be negative 1.69 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, and the exact charge of a proton is positive 1.69 times 10 to the 19 coulombs. Coulombs here just being the unit we use to measure charge. As the charges for both particles are the same, they ended up being described as having relative or elementary charges positive one for a proton, and negative one for an electron. As atoms were known to be neutral overall and have no charge, it made logical sense to conclude that in an atom the number of protons must be the same as the number of electrons. It was also discovered that the mass of a single proton was 1840 times greater than the mass of a single electron. Or, in other words, the mass of one electron is 1840 times smaller than the mass of one proton. All of this work was followed up a few years later by a scientist called James Chadwick, who discovered that atoms also contained particles in a nucleus with no charge that he called neutrons. 
Most important, however, was the fact that these neutrons had a mass that was very, very similar to the mass of a proton. Pretty much the same. Because of how close these masses are to each other, they are both now assigned a relative mass number of 1. It's a bit lazy, really, as they don't have exactly the same mass. However, this only really causes a headache for very precise measurements. Compared to both protons and neutrons, the relative mass of an electron is given as 1 over 1840. Because, as we've just found out, the actual mass of a single electron is 1840 times smaller than the actual mass of a single proton. Fast forward a few more years again, and after some very heavy mathematics and breathtaking thinking from some amazing scientists, we now have a more complete model of the atom that is called the electron cloud model. It's described as a model as it's only a representation of what we think is going on, based on our current understanding and experimental results. The model proposes a small, dense centre called a nucleus that is made up of protons and neutrons, and it's surrounded by negatively charged electrons. The electrons exist in specific areas or regions of space called orbitals, and only a maximum of two electrons can exist in any one orbital, a pair of electrons. These orbitals can only exist at certain distances from the nucleus, in what are called energy levels or shells. They are labelled with a principal quantum number, n. These are whole numbers starting with 1. n equals 1 refers to the energy level closest to the nucleus, n equals 2, the next closest, n equals 3, the next closest, and so on. Electrons are unable to exist between these energy levels, and each one can hold a different number of electrons, as when you move further away from the nucleus, there is more space available for electron orbitals to be in. Within each energy level, there are subshells, although the first shell only contains one subshell labelled as S. Different subshells are made up of different types of orbitals that have different shapes and each type of subshell only has a certain number of orbitals in. There are S, P, D and F subshells. The further an energy level is from the nucleus, the more subshells it contains. For example, atoms of sodium have 11 protons, 12 neutrons and 11 electrons. The 11 protons and 12 neutrons are held tightly together inside the atom's nucleus, and the 11 electrons fill up the energy levels or shells that are around it. There are two electrons in the first energy level, eight in the second, and one in the third. We draw the electrons in pairs, and each pair represents an orbital. Electron orbitals, subshells, and how electrons occupy them have been covered in much more detail in separate videos. Check the links in the description below. All atoms have a certain number of protons in their nucleus, and this number is referred to as the atom's atomic number. A value called a mass number is also used to refer to the combined number of protons and neutrons in an atom's nucleus. This is sometimes also called the nucleon number, as in the number of particles inside the nucleus. Atomic and mass numbers are usually shown to the left of an element symbol, with the atomic number as a subscript and the mass number as a superscript, <laughs> although sometimes you may see these drawn the other way around. Don't get fooled, however. The smaller number will always be the atomic number, and the larger number, the mass number. The number of protons in an atom is the same as the number of electrons, as they have no overall charge, and the positive charge of the protons must be cancelled out by the same amount of negative charge coming from the electrons. However, atoms can lose or gain electrons in a chemical reaction. Then the number of electrons it has is no longer the same as its number of protons, and as a result, the atom has an overall charge, and is now described as an ion rather than an atom. Really important to note here, however, that the number of protons will always remain the same in a chemical reaction. 
For example, as we've seen, sodium has 11 protons in its nucleus, meaning it has an atomic number of 11. When sodium reacts, its atoms often lose one electron, and a positively charged ion is formed. As the number of protons, 11, is now one greater than the number of electrons, 10. This has been outlined in more detail in a video about ions and ionic bonding. Check the links in the description below. Whether in an atom or an ion, however, the number of protons inside the nucleus is always the same for a given element. This is important as the type of atom or element is determined by the number of protons it has in its nucleus. Because of this, as strange as it may seem, atoms can have the same number of protons and be the same element whilst having different numbers of neutrons. This means that they would have the same atomic number number of protons, and a different mass number, combined number of protons and neutrons. Such atoms are described as isotopes of an element. So, to summarise, atoms are the smallest indivisible units of an element. Our understanding of atoms has changed significantly over time, and it was discovered that atoms contain smaller particles, now called subatomic particles. These are electrons, protons and neutrons, discovered in that order. Electrons have a relative charge of 1 minus, protons 1 plus, and neutrons 0. Protons and neutrons both have a relative mass of 1 and electrons 1 over 1840. Relative charge and mass is used to make comparisons easier. The current model of the atom most frequently referred to is the electron cloud model. It describes an atom as having a very small, dense region of positive charge made up of protons and neutrons called the nucleus. The nucleus is surrounded by electrons that exist in orbitals within specific energy levels or shells labelled as principal quantum numbers, starting with the number 1 for the energy level closest to the nucleus. There are subshells within a shell made up of different shaped electron orbitals. One orbital can hold one pair of electrons, and the further you move away from the nucleus of an atom, the more electron orbitals there are that can fit around it, meaning energy levels further from the nucleus contain more subshells and subsequently more electrons. The first energy level, or shell, with a principal quantum number of 1 can hold 2 electrons. The second, with a principal quantum number of 2, can hold 8 electrons. The third, with a principal quantum number of 3, can hold 18 electrons. Atoms are assigned an atomic number that refers to the number of protons in its nucleus, and a mass number that refers to the combined number of protons and neutrons in its nucleus. The number of protons in an atom determines the element that it is an atom of, meaning atoms of different elements have different numbers of protons in them. Atoms of the same element always have the same number of protons as each other. Isotopes are atoms that have the same number of protons, meaning they are the same element, whilst having a different number of neutrons, meaning they have different mass numbers. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out other relevant videos in the links given in the description below, and visit chemistrystudent.com for free notes and revision materials.